the European peoples. It looks as if the European peoples will continue their downward traje trajectory. Dysgenic fertility has been with us for six generations and is still present. It is unlikely that this will end. High IQ young career women will continue to have low fertility. The migration of third world peoples into European populations in North America and in Western Europe will continue pulling down the IQ of the new populations. This will very likely spread to Eastern Europe later in the century as the United States, Canada and Western Europe become successively less attractive places as United, United States. The single largest group become Mexicans. The population will become like Mexico. This will be a less attractive place for Mexicans to enter. Why should they wish to enter the new Mexican the United States? They might as well stay at home. But they will turn, third world immigrants looking for higher standards of living will turn to Eastern Europe. So the, uh, I see the future in rather pessimistic terms for the European peoples. Possibly it might be solved by secession in the United States of some of the northern states. Maine and Vermont perhaps might declare independence from the Union. And they would, the same might take place in some of the uh, northeastern states in uh, perhaps Montana or North and South Dakota. States of those, the populations of these states might, considering as they see the rest of the states being overwhelmed by immigrants, might opt for secession for the, from the Union and have uh, developed their own European populations with uh, very strict immigration control. <clears throat> the third world is also on a downward trajectory. Dysgenic fertility has just begun and they will also be adversely affected by dysgenic immigration as the elites from the third world migrate into the first world. The Northeast Asians uh, will be less severely affected by these processes. They have some dysgenic fertility, but this will very likely in time be overcome by embryo selection. They do not have any dysgenic immigration and are unlikely to have it in the foreseeable future. China in particular will probably be the most successful of these countries because it does not have the handicap of being a democratic country. I don't believe that the dysgenic problem can be overcome in democracies. And China has a big advantage in this regard that it could introduce policies such as paying high sums of money to female graduates to have children and not to the rest of the population. It can introduce policies of this kind which would be unacceptable in democracies. China also has one considerable advantage arising as an unforeseen consequence of the one child of the one child policy. The consequence of the one child family has, uh, has been that many couples would prefer to have a boy than a girl. And uh, they have secured this objective. So there are many more young men in, in China than there are young women. Uh, this could have a significant eugenic effect because it places power in the hands of women to select men. Women who select men as their mates and marriage partners generally select men who are intelligent, successful and of high moral character. So the effect of this will be effectively to sterilize around 23% of the male population. Now uh, this is really talking as compared with sterilizing 1% of the population in Sweden in the 1930s or half percent of the population in Germany. When you're talking about sterilizing 23% of the male population, this will have a considerable eugenic effect. 
So, call this a pessimistic or a, an optimistic scenario. My view of the probable future is that while the genetic quality of the European populations declines, that of China will increase together with her economic and military power. And to conclude on a note of qualified optimism, I think it's possible, probable that the torch of civilization will pass from the European peoples to the Chinese. Thank you.